This is high cow country. This is summer grazing country, some of the best in the West. This is the country of big beef herds and vast ranches. It is the native ground of the cattle industry. When winter snows retreat to the peaks and streams run bank full, there's new life in the cattle business. The warming rays of the spring sun are a portent of a delightful summer on the range. It's like a pleasant dream for this white-faced, ruddy-coated youngster. And every calf has own mobile lunch stand never far away. The trick is to get it. While certain breeds of cattle predominate in this country, any desirable beef type animals that fit the environment find their place in the cattle industry. Cattle which have enjoyed the brisk summer in the high range country now have the hardihood to withstand the crackling cold of winter. Winter or summer, the cattleman never relaxes his vigilance. Every season of the year brings special chores, and a little extra care now may bring extra dividends later on. When spring brings its welcome green grass, lush from the moisture of winter snows, another cycle of growth begins, for grass is basic cattle feed. The animals harvest it themselves and convert the nutrients and vitamins into generous frames as they grow frames that will carry the forthcoming load of meat. Living proof of the value of good breeding is this fine youngster. She owes her heritage of excellence to a proved sire whose ability to transmit his quality to his offspring is established. Much of the responsibility for herd quality rests on the range bull. He contributes importantly to the production of superior offspring, of profit-making capabilities. On more than three and one half million farms and ranches, ranging from a few acres to many thousands, the spirit of the Old West comes alive. The cowboy and his horse once more live the busy pattern of cattle care that early summer brings. animal is a valuable unit that merits comparable care and receives individual attention through the trained eyes of the cattlemen. Spraying is an annual chore that prevents harassment of the cattle by insect pests and parasites. The sprayer is usually a mobile type that can be taken to any place on the ranch. Dipping the animals accomplishes the same purpose as spraying. Inoculation prevents diseases that at one time seriously crippled cattle profits. The old branding iron is still with us, but a newfangled heater has replaced the old campfire. There is no doubt now that this young fellow in the squeeze chute belongs to the K-Bar-K. And now this young stuff is headed for the high range country, where they will spend the summer just growing. In the fall of the year, when the eager fingers of the early frosts paint the aspens in the high country in vivid colors, it's roundup time. Each canyon and draw, each willow-fringed creek bottom gives up its complement of bovine residents. Spindly-legged calves no longer, they are much larger, deep in body and well-fleshed from an undisturbed summer on range grasses almost suggesting a ghostly symbol of the herds of the old Chisholm Trail, an ever-growing stream of cattle are headed in a single direction, to market. West becomes one big dusty roundup. Quality big 
begins on the ranch. Superior cattle and careful scientific handling combine to make today's beef animal a unit of measured value of real proportions. Where the cattle drive of the Old West saw almost half of the value of the herd vanish during the long trek, today's short drive to a nearby railhead results in little or no shrinkage. Ready to move at dawn, the herd is fed and rested in a holding pasture for the night. When the first crimson rays of the rising sun tint the eastern sky, men, horses and cattle are on the move. Destination, the railroad. In the half light of early dawn, a frosty tang is in the air and the grass crackles underfoot as the herd moves on. The air is filled with the shouts of the cowhands and the muted lowing of steaming cattle. In any trailing of cattle, the welfare of the animals comes first. Rather than driving cattle on a helter-skelter basis, most cattlemen prefer to lead the herd. And once on the move, the animals remain docile and tractable. familiar with it, a feeling of ritual accompanies the movement of the cattle, a ritualistic surge back to the old days when a cattle drive was not just a commercial enterprise, but was a moving page of Western history, written in the dust stirred by thousands of hoofs. Arrival at the railroad stockyards is the signal for activity of a different nature. In this case, where the cattle are sold to a buyer at the shipping pens, they must be recounted and weighed to determine the total due the rancher. Gentle handling to avoid bruising and damage is still the order of the day, as the cattle are directed through the pens and loading chutes into the waiting stock cars. It takes real know-how, too, for the railroad to have the necessary cars on hand at the right place at the right time. Cattle shipments can't wait. On the Great Plains, the promise of approaching winter spurs this cattle loading operation. Here, the entire herd will be loaded at one time and transported to market as a single expedited shipment. The moment that the last steer is loaded, the train is ready to move. Long years of experience in serving Western cattlemen have made Union Pacific an unexcelled mover of cattle to market centers. Livestock trains operating on fast schedules supply efficient transportation at a time when hours may mean profits. Cattle marketing centers are strategically located and Omaha serves a large Western area. Its holding pens have handled more than 100 million cattle since its founding over 80 years ago. And here's our livestock train, right on schedule, early morning arrival. First, the cattle must be penned, watered, fed, and rested. Simple steps in an otherwise intricate pattern of procedure. On the way to becoming quality beef, the cattle will be sold at auction to feedlot operators who specialize in finishing off top-grade animals. After being grouped and weighed, they are driven to the auction floor.
75 and about a quarter and a half and about a half and about a half and thank you, not 75 and about 75 and 25, thank you, not quarter. Yes, 25 and a quarter and a half and about a half and a half. Yes, 50, not 60, not 5, 60, minimum, 60, 70, minimum, 5, 70, 80, minimum, 5, 80 there. Yes, 25, 70, minimum, 5, 80. Yes, 75 and 85 and about 90, minimum, 5, 90, minimum, 25 and about 25. Yes, And so it goes in the interesting process of selling cattle to feedlot operators. An extensive empire of feeding pens introduces the steers to a new life, far from the wide open spaces. A life where one day runs into another, marked only by a plentiful supply of water and the delight of appetizing high protein feeds. A cattle feeding complex like this vast layout can be compared to a factory production line with the end product being beef. And each animal is a small factory in itself, turning raw materials into a highly esteemed finished product for human consumption. Integrated with the feedlot is the mill where specialized diets are formulated and mixed. The subject of animal nutrition has won the attention of some of the best research brains in the country. And vast new areas of nutritional science are being opened. The controls exercised by the laboratory will be reflected in the quantity and quality of beef produced in the feedlot. The cattle industry has welcomed new nutritional developments that lead to improved quality beef and an opportunity for better profits. The need for mechanized methods of production and automatic feeding attracted the attention of agricultural engineers and inventors who have increased feeding efficiency while decreasing costs. More efficient methods result in delivering the feed to the cattle in measured quantity at the proper time. Another important step in the production of good beef. Fence line trough feeding provides a uniform feeding method and prevents waste. 